Hello, what's up guys? This is the second part in the tutorial series for developing Android applications. In this tutorial, we're going to start with the new project. I'm going to tell you how to create a new project and then I'm also going to explain the basics of a few um, Android applications and how different uh, Android applications are developed and different parts of an Android application basically. So let's start by double clicking Eclipse. Uh, well, this is actually a really slow computer, so it might take a little time to load the Eclipse. So now that Eclipse is loaded, let's just minimize that. Alright, and these are actually the applications I was working on, so I'll just close them. And uh, we're going to start. Uh, these are the applications that are currently we're working. So we're going to start up a new project. So we can do either by clicking here and then a new Android project, or if you don't find this or for some reason your toolbar does not appear, then you can create a new and uh, from file menu and from create a new Android app project. Now this is the project name. Uh, you can put anything for this tutorial. We're gonna put. And that calc because we're going to start with a small basic calculator, just plus minus and basic stuff, nothing too complicated. So just you just know how to develop Android applications. Uh, we're going to pick up pace and go into the details when we're developing higher applications, um, very complex applications. I'm going to develop a bunch of applications in these tutorials so that you will know how to interact, uh, how to develop, uh, sorry, the different types of applications in Android. So now we just put the name here, right, and we want to create a new project in the workspace. Uh, remember the workspace that I told you, you have to keep the workspace a constant so that all your projects will be listed or otherwise you might end up getting errors. Okay, so we're just gonna click next, and uh, this is the only API that we installed, the Android 2.3.3. So this is only available. But if uh, you have installed other uh, APIs, then they would also be listed here, and you can easily select the ones that you prefer to build the application for. Now here is the package name. The package name is basically, I'll explain a bit about packages later on, but at the moment you can say that this is actually the unique name of your Android application. So there is a convention, let's just do that. Uh, we're gonna do com dot and dot calc dot let's say org. You can uh, put your website address a unique mm, package this should be unique because this is how it's going to be identified on the Android market so this should be unique alright so we will also want to create a basic activity the startup activity so we will check this because an activities are basically you can say that these are mm, different real life activities going on in Android applications so everything is done in an activity so we will need to create a basic activity to start development so we're going to start with the basic activity from here click finish and you'll see that it has appeared here the new all right so these are actually when you maximize or expand the list uh, these are the different folders and uh, these are files uh, i will explain these files to you uh, in a bit Mm, but before that I need to explain to you what uh, activities are and uh, what are different features that are available for Android app development. Uh, Alright, so now we're going to I'm going to explain to you how different applications work in Android. So these are the libraries that uh, we have available. This is Surface Manager, OpenGL, SGL, and uh, all these libraries. And now you also notice that we have SQLite, uh, which is used um, for storing mm, user data, or if you're developing games, you can store level data or something like that, so you can retrieve on later. Now WebKit is used for developing web uh, for developing web page based applications actually applications that are going to use web pages 
because the browser is based on this one also so there are these are the libraries and uh, Delvec virtual machine is basically sort of where the applications run so um, this is basically the whole Android architecture um, at a very high level um, I'm going to post these links uh, on in the description of the video so that you can go through them uh, these are actually quite helpful if for you to understand um, uh, here it is explained all the functions of these libraries and how they work um, so <coughs> excuse me so now we're going to start over the activities now what are activities activities are basically what uh, how things are done in Android everything is done in an activity now an activity has these few mm, functions that we will override for our applications now on create is the one that is created when the activity runs when the activity launches on create is created and then there are, is a pause for when the application is minimized and then the resume and then uh, this whole cycle works like that so uh, we're going to be working on on create on pause uh, on resume and on stop uh, or on destroy well I'll explain these to you as we go along so I'm also going to post the link for this uh, for, uh, for these documents mm, in the description so that you can refer to them later on so now let's get started with uh, the application I'm going to explain to you what these folders are all about so uh, the source folder or SRC uh, this is where our entire source code for the application will be now these are this is a package now if you've programmed in Java you have uh, very well uh, a good idea of what packages are packages are basically a collection of classes um, everything in Java is done classes so mm, a package is a collection of relative classes uh, classes that are related to each other sorry so uh, everything has to be bundled in a package and uh, one thing you should notice is that the class name should also be the same name as the file name of Java that is something that is a Java convention not a convention actually a Java rule you have to obey that so now you see that uh, in the uh, Java uh, the and calc activity uh, Java file the on create function is already created now you will see the add override command over here that it has been over uh, there we are overriding the functions well these are already defined now our class extends the activity class if you know if you programmed in Java you know what extends means. if you don't then you can simply imagine that extend means that uh, there is a class activity uh, and our class our application class extends that class means that it extends the functionality of that class um, well basically it means that it borrows the functionality from activity class and then we implement the functionality in our class so uh, this is kind of um, inheritance concepts so it would be good if you have good programming concepts but if you don't then for making basic applications you don't really need much of programming concepts all you need is basic algorithm design and sequence flow design techniques or just knowledge or intuition so and then uh, there is this uh, gen uh, which is actually automatically created uh, it is basically a resource uh, type thing everything you put on the application every identity every ID ADC everything is etc etc uh, it's all automatically updated in this and these are the libraries that we have included actually the Eclipse includes these libraries automatically so you don't need to bother about them or this so we're going to be mainly working in the SRC folder and the RES folder RES is basically it is actually the resource folder uh, and uh, it contains images layouts strings everything that is going to be mm, included in the application is going to be here alright now this is the main layout alright uh, we're going to run this uh, we're going to actually open it so it's gonna take a little bit for the first uh, 
Um, the manifest is actually where all the activity information is contained. It links different activities and it's where activity each and every activity must be registered in the Android manifest. So this is the graphical editor. Uh, we won't be using much of the graphical editor because uh, we don't really get to the proper programming experience from this. But if you want to use it, you can use it. You can just drag drop stuff there. Uh, it's pretty easy. So, but uh, I will explain these layouts to you uh, in uh, the next tutorials. But everything has to be put in the proper layout so that it will appear exactly how you want it to be. Um, you can imagine that these are divided in grids. So, uh, and uh, everything you have to put has to be uh, relative to the grid. All right. So now you can either design in the graphical layout or in the XML one. Uh, so if you know how to program good, um, you can just uh, keep on writing in the XML code and everything you do will appear exactly in the graphical layout. Alright, so one other thing that should be that we will cover in this tutorial is the strings. Uh, under values there is a string.xml file. Now this string.xml file contains all the strings that we might use in our program. For example, the buttons that we might use, uh, the text this, that will be displayed on the buttons or throughout the program. That can, it should be stored, actually recommended by Android that it should be stored in these strings. Well, the reason for storing that in these strings is that you can simply manipulate these, the values of these strings and it will be reflected in your program. For example, uh, over here you can see that the hello world message is displayed by the string hello uh, which I will also show how to reference these the strings in next tutorials but um, for now just understand that if we change the value of the string from hello world to something like this uh, and save it it will all be reflected in the main as you can see uh, I'm not sure if you can see let's zoom in a bit let's see you can see so it's simple you can if you want to change the language or change the message that should be displayed just simply change the string and you don't have to code anymore the entire thing will be reflected automatically well that's it for today stay tuned and if you have any comments feel free to email me